It was the afternoon of May 14, 1973, when the unmanned Skylab Saturn workshop was hurled aloft at Cape Kennedy, on the way to its assigned orbit 236 nautical miles in space. The cloud cover was heavy on launch day and prevented tracking cameras from seeing an event that occurred about one minute into the mission. At the point of maximum vibration, telemetry sensed premature deployment of the meteoroid shield, followed by a weak electrical signal from the workshop solar arrays. Clearly, there had been a problem, but the exact nature wasn't known until after orbital insertion. During the first revolution, Skylab temperatures began to rise rapidly, and pieces of the puzzle started to fall in place. NASA engineers surmised that the anomalies were most likely related. It was felt that the meteoroid shield had been completely lost at deployment, which accounted for the high heat levels. Also, that fragments of the meteoroid shield had jammed or otherwise hindered full deployment of the solar array panels. Failure of these panels, which were designed to furnish about half of Skylab's electrical power, meant that the total power burden would have to be borne by solar panels of the Apollo telescope mount. By early evening, workshop temperatures had risen above the level of safety. Launching of the crew the following day received an indefinite hold, pending satisfactory solutions. Flight support and engineering teams were immediately set in motion to find the answers. At stake was the future of the entire Skylab program. The most urgent need was to achieve a thermal electrical balance. This meant maneuvering to an optimum flight attitude for solar requirements that were in direct conflict. Too much solar radiation would drive temperatures higher, increasing the chances of component damage and food spoilage. On the other hand, generation of electrical power to drive heat exchangers and food freezers was wholly dependent on exposure to the sun. While flight controllers struggled to achieve this delicate balance, other teams had the major objective of designing a thermal shield that could be deployed on the workshop to make it habitable. NASA centers and private industry responded with a variety of shield concepts. The most promising designs were released for fabrication. Finally, they were subjected to functional testing. By the fifth day of the mission, the choice had been narrowed to a model called the Parasol. It had good functional reliability, and the crew would be able to deploy it from inside the workshop through a scientific airlock. Another shield, the Twin Pole Sunshade, would also be carried on the mission as a backup. Here in the Skylab underwater simulator at the Marshall Space Flight Center, crews practiced extravehicular installation of the sunshade in conditions approximating zero G. As for the solar wings, simulation methods were mostly inconclusive. Little was known about the extent of wing damage at this point, and the crew could only speculate on how best to make them deploy. At mission control, solar orientation of the spacecraft had begun to yield positive results. Temperatures, still too high for habitation, were stabilized, and electrical power was sufficient for operating vital systems and equipment. Though still precarious, the situation had been checked. There was reason to believe it would remain stable until the astronauts launch, now scheduled for May 25th, 10 days behind the original schedule. <laughs> 